Good morning, St. James. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, glad to see everyone here today. It is another day. It is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it, All right? We should be rejoice and be glad in it. It is um, Sunday, March the 21st. March is almost done. Moving pretty quickly, moving pretty quickly. Thank you for your presence here today. And we are glad to worship with you. So let us, um, let us begin our worship, the prelude. Amen. Um, as we always do each Sunday, um, we have prayers for the people after our family ministry moment. So if you would like to ask for prayer, if you don't want to speak it um, on our Zoom here, please put it in the chat and we will be sure to recognize you and your prayer. Thank you. Okay, Allison, family ministry moments. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Unfortunately, my printer ran out of ink this morning, but luckily for us, it only ran out of black ink and it still had the color ink. So I got to print this beautiful picture of our woman that we're talking about today. But then all the words that printed out were nothing. So I'm going to read it off of my phone, but at least we got to see this awesome picture because it's so beautiful. This is uh, Mariam Malorka, Molkara, I'm sorry, Mariam Molkara. One day in Iran, a woman named Mariam had to dig deep inside of herself and find an enormous amount of courage. She needed to try to change a law in her country, but in order to try to change it, she knew she might be hurt or put in prison. She had already been imprisoned and treated badly for being honest about herself, and she knew something had to change. She also knew that she was the best person to try to change, to bring about that change. Miriam was transgender. When she was born, her parents and doctor thought she looked like a boy. And so that is how they thought of her. But inside, she always knew she was a girl. When I was very small, I used to scream when they tried to dress me in boys' clothes, she said. Every night I prayed for a miracle, but in the morning I looked at my body and the miracle hadn't appeared. When she was older, she got a job as a nurse in a hospital where she was known for her gentle hands. A doctor who worked there was also transgender, but he was a transgender man who had already fully transitioned to living as a man. One day, Miriam confided to him that she felt like she was really a woman. He told her that he understood and he shared his story. He explained to her what it meant to be transgender. She had never realized before this that other people had similar experiences of being born in a body that looked like one thing on the outside, but on the inside felt different. She felt so much better knowing she was not alone, and she began dressing as a woman most of the time. She also took hormones that helped her body look more like a woman's. 
When Miriam finally told her parents about her true self, they were very upset. She decided to go to a religious authority as both she and her parents were very devout Muslims. Miriam's struggles grew harder in 1979 when there was a revolution and the government of the country was taken over by strict religious leaders. Rules about how people had to look, dress and behave got stricter and there were especially strict rules about gender roles. Miriam was punished on several occasions for dressing like a woman and she even got thrown into prison. She was lucky to have connections with powerful people who helped her get out. She was forced to take a hormone that made her look like a man. She had to grow a beard, which was something expected of men under the new religious leaders. She was miserable. She knew she was a woman, yet she was forced to look and live like a man. She decided she needed to visit the most powerful religious leader in the country, the Ayatollah Khamenei, to ask for permission to live as the woman that she knew inside that she was meant to be. She went to the compound where the Ayatollah's office was. She placed a pair of shoes around her neck, which was a well-known symbol in her country of someone seeking shelter and refuge. She also carried the Quran to help convey the message that she came in peace. Unfortunately, the Ayatollah's guards did not honor her symbols of peace and they began to beat her. To them, she looked like a man dressed in a suit with a beard and they thought that she had come to harm the Ayatollah. I'm a woman, I'm a woman, Miriam cried out. The Ayatollah's son, hearing her cries, came outside to investigate. He intervened and told the guards to stop. He brought Miriam to his father. Miriam began to tell her story and her story touched the hearts of everyone in the room. Miriam's courage paid off. She walked out of the Ayatollah's office with a letter giving her legal and religious permission to seek the medical treatment she needed to safely live as a woman. The letter not only gave Miriam freedom to live her life as her authentic self, but it gave other transgender Iranians the same religious permission. She later started an organization to spread awareness and help other transgender people know about their rights. Today, she is remembered as a trailblazer. Her bold and risky walk into the Ayatollah's office forever changed not only her life, but the lives of other transgender people too. And the question that we're kind of thinking about today is, have you ever had to do something that felt very scary in order to be true to yourself? So we'll talk about that more during children's time. Thank you all. Thank you, Allison. That was an awesome story. Something um, we may not think about every day, having to ask people to be who we feel like we are. Yeah. Sometimes we do that without realizing we're doing it. We don't have to do it. We live in a free country, but sometimes we feel like we need permission from people. Um, so that was an interesting story. Thank you very much. God, we thank you for this day that you have given us um, to come together again and fellowship and to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for allowing us to be together once again. God, we ask that you hear our petitions and you hear the prayers of our people and your people. Um, we ask that the prayers that are not spoken be heard and those that need healing be healed and those that need to be delivered be delivered and those that just need a little extra touch from you, Lord. We ask that you bless us all. Give us what we need. You know what our needs are. So please grant us our needs and give us the desires of our hearts as we continue to glorify you, as we continue to magnify your name, and as we continue to worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We are now moving into our 1045-ish um, worship. So we will be um, Facebooking live, just to let you know, Facebooking live.
Amen. Well, we're welcoming you to worship today. Those of you who are here with us today via Zoom, via Facebook Live, we are so glad that you are here with us at St. James Worshiping God once again, once again. Thank you for being here. Are there any announcements today? I have a couple, if you all are thinking about others. Um, Miss, Miss Aileen is completing the um, directory. So if you have um, information that needs to be updated in the directory, please um, get that to her this week, if possible. I think she wants to go ahead and complete that and get it out. So if you have updated info, please send that or forward that to, to Miss Aileen. Also, we still have the Be a Blessing signs. Um, we have several inside of the sanctuary and we have several in front of the church that are stuck down in the in the yard. Um, they're disappearing, but we still have a few. So if you would like to um, be a blessing in your own yard, you can come and take a yard sign or put it in your um, window. I think we have to put ours in our window here. So if you want to do that, those are there. Um, for Easter this year, we have... Um, chatted about and, and talked about Easter service. So this is what we came up with. We are going to do a sunrise service, S-O-N rise. Is that right, Jen? Sunrise service. So it, because it's not gonna be at sunrise as you in at 7 a.m. We're, we're not gonna do that this year. This year we wanna do a service at 9 a.m. at the Grange, which will be outside um, and then at 1030, we will, um, I will be inside of the sanctuary for worship. We're, we're not going to open up the, the sanctuary for um, everyone to come in to, to worship. We're not prepared for that just yet. We want to remain safe. Okay. So Easter Sunday, sunrise service will be at 9 a.m. at the Grange. So if you want to come out and hang out outside, it'll be a, a, a short service. They have already told me that those those services are much shorter because it's cold usually. And then at 1030, um, we, I'll be in the sanctuary for a regular worship, okay? And that is, um, all, those are all the announcements that I have uh, for today. Anybody else got anything? Maybe not. All right. Let us open with our opening prayer. Lord, be with us this day as we commit ourselves to being your disciples. Help us to face the future unafraid, trusting in your loving care and presence with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship <clears throat> with our call to worship. Ed is helping us out with that today. Thank you, Ed. This is the fifth step on our Lenten journey, the step of sacrifice. Be with us, Lord, as we take this step. This requires the willingness to give all of our life to the Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we commit our lives to you. Come, let us worship and offer our voices to praise, of praise to God. Let us open our hearts and spirits to God this day. God's mercy floods over us. Lord, wash me clean of the pain in my life. God's love pours into us. Lord, pour your love into every pore of my being. Let the love and mercy of God reign in our hearts today. Be with us, Lord, and guide our lives. Amen. Amen. Come and fill our hearts. If you have, I'm sorry, if you have a prayer requests, um, please put them in the chat. If you're on Facebook, please put them in the comments. If you want us to share or pray for you, please do that now. 
I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. So as we wait for uh, maybe a few more prayers or um, maybe for us to put in the chat what we'd like to be prayed for, let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. God offers redemption to people of every generation, making new life possible for everyone. Repent believe in the gospel, and be healed. In meeting Christ, we become new creations. As we share the peace of Christ with each other, we share the newness of life Christ brings. Come, enter into new life in Christ. Amen. Connie is asking prayers for the unity of the unity in the Christian church and our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kim is asking that we pray for the children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Talisha has prayers of thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Rala says prayers for our nation to once again be united in spirit and in truth. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anyone else? Talisha says prayers for all to be refreshed and revived. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Rala asks for prayers for our presidents to give him wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay. So if there are no others, let us go to God. Once again, in prayer, and I forget to do this um, every Sunday, especially for those of us on live. I am Pastor D. Dion Boy is the pastor here at St. James. Not everybody knows that, so I apologize. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Let us pray. God, we've asked for prayers. We've asked for healing. We've asked for peace. 
we've asked that you touch people, important people who are all people. Touch us. Give us what we need. Give us what we need to move forward. Give our nation the love that it needs to love one another, to come together as one. Give our leaders what they need to lead us in the right direction, in love. Give our president the wisdom and the knowledge, yes, and the discernment that he needs in order to lead us, lead this country, which affects the whole world. Let us come together in love, heal those that need to be healed, deliver those that need to be delivered. Grant us peace, mercy, and grace, and just allow your anointing to fall fresh on us. Allow your peace and your grace to fall fresh upon us as this is a new day and your mercies are new every morning. So we look for the new mercies in you and we are thankful for those mercies. We thank you in advance for answering our prayers and our petitions and for hearing us and hearing our hearts. And God, we ask that you touch us in a very special way, clean up our hearts so that we may be used by you. And let us pray the prayer that we were taught to pray. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is offertory worship time, offertory worship time. Jen will place the information for us to know. We uh, give offerings unto the Lord and we give offerings unto our places of worship to keep them um, sustained, to keep them going, to keep them uh, available to us to worship with and from. So St. James thanks you in advance for your offering. Even if it's just an offering of prayer, we thank you for that. Let us pray our, our prayer of offering together, please. All things have their origin with you, Lord. And from these riches, we freely give that your church might grow in this place and throughout the world. Amen. Thank you, Ed. I have one more prayer. It says, prayers from Marlene, prayers of thanks. He blessed me to get a furnace. <laughs> prayers of thanks for the love of God. Yes, amen for that furnace, mom. Okay. Today's reading is from Psalm 51, verses one through 12. Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. That was beautiful. So we have been moving through this Lenten season like the Jesus champs that we are. We are now entering the sixth week of Lent. We are moving closer to the day we remember Jesus being resurrected from death to life. We have been talking about what it means to love God, to love Jesus, and definitely how to love others. It is now time for us to look at self, meaning to search our hearts to be sure that our intentions are pure and clean. The songwriter says, create in me a clean heart and purify me. Create in me a clean heart so that I may worship thee. Cast me not away from thy presence. Please don't take your spirit from me and restore the joy of salvation so that I may worship thee. When we hear the words of songs like this and like the one Roxanne just sang, give me a clean heart so I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee for I'm not worthy of all of these blessings. So give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. When we hear these words sung as a worship song unto God, we are hearing someone asking God to prepare our hearts and our minds to serve God. They are giving themselves over to God so that they may be used by God in God's service. But why do we need to prepare our hearts and minds to worship and serve God? Well, the answer is rather simple, but the process is very complex. The answer is because we simply cannot serve God wholeheartedly if we are distracted by the sins of this world and its uncleanliness. However, David, the writer of today's scripture, walks us through the process. David was asking God to forgive him for his sins and to restore him to a place of peace and grace. He was pleading with God to not 
turn away from him because of his sin. David had committed some sins that many of us may perceive as unforgivable. In a nutshell, David deliberately had a sexual affair with a married woman. And to make matters worse, he murdered the married woman's husband. And because of these horrible sins that were committed to satisfy his weak flesh, David was unclean in many ways. He had the sin of adultery looming over him and he had the blood of the murdered husband on his hands. He knew in his heart that none of this was right, nor was it pleasing in the eyesight of God. David's heart was full of lust, jealousy, and rage. His heart was unclean. His heart was no longer pure. And notice I said no longer. As newborns, toddlers, children, and even preteens, our hearts are considered pure. We are not yet tainted by the wicked and evil ways of the world. At these ages, we are innocent beings. However, as we grow and get a whiff of the world and begin tasting to see what the world has to offer, our purity and innocence quickly turns into dirty, soiled actions, words, and thoughts. Because we become tainted and our thoughts and actions become soiled with the ways of this world, we have to ask God to clean and purify our hearts. It is next to impossible for us to cleanse our own hearts, our own spirits, and our own minds. This kind of cleansing takes a supernatural touch. However, just like with any other supernatural occurrence, we have to allow God to work that magic within us, the heavenly magic of cleansing our hearts, minds, and spirits. We have to surrender our inner selves in order to be cleansed and made pure. One of the reasons we ask God to cleanse our hearts is because when our hearts are unclean, meaning full of evil things of this world, like hate, malice, deception, division, greed, and pride, we begin to feel, see, say, and do things that are not so pleasing to God or that may hurt ourselves or those around us. And we, when we live in the ways of this world, we lose the joy that God placed within us. We may feel happy at times, but true joy is absent in the presence of evil. We can also lose hope and we can lose sight of what God has in store for our lives. When we're not living the life God has designed and purposed for us, we become sad. We feel disconnected from our source, the Holy Spirit. We, when we sin, we feel bad and we may feel guilt or sorrow or even grief. So asking God to cleanse our hearts is not only for God's sake, but a clean heart allows us to love better and to live better. David had deep sorrow and felt bad about the hurtful things he had done. He knew he didn't feel good about himself and he knew he needed to repent. And this 51st chapter in Psalm demonstrates the steps needed to be cleansed by God's loving power. Sometimes when our hearts are unpure and we have seasons of doubt and destruction, our flesh tugs at us a bit and lets us know that we need to get it right. We need to repent or ask for forgiveness and ask God to cleanse our hearts. And once we meet Christ, and get a taste of just how good our God can be, we get used to feeling that love. We can get accustomed to walking the road God has placed before us. As with all of humanity, at times we swerve left and find ourselves off the path to success and freedom. And when we realize that what we've done or what we are planning to do contradicts God's plans, we may begin to feel the weight of an unclean heart or an unpure heart. But this is also when we want to run back into the safe arms of Jesus. 
being disobedient, carrying ill feelings towards others and attempting to worship God with a filthy heart will always remain on our conscience. It makes us uncomfortable and somewhere down the road, we begin to feel sorrow and shame. How do I know that we feel it when we mistreat people or disobey God? Because we are spiritual beings made in the image of our perfect God. This means goodness and love is an inherent trait placed within us before we were conceived. We are created good and loving. Again, it is the way we perceive the world that dictates how we walk through this life. So yes, we feel it when we mistreat others because our spirits are kindred and connected to our creator God and our conscience is wired for love. This is why chapter 51 is essential. It's an essential prayer that David prayed as he desired to be restored by God because of his sin. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for the culmination of this Lent season and look forward to Resurrection Day, like David, we too should offer God prayers of repentance and seek God's face for forgiveness. When we sin against God, our sins keep us distant from God. I'll say that again. When we sin against God, our sins keep us distant from God, not because God punishes us for our sins, but because when we sin, we put walls up around us that keep us separated from God. Our own conscience keeps us distant. Why? Because our flesh is easily drawn to sin. And as we may know, sin and God just don't mix. So while we are sinning or doing things contrary to what our spirits and minds have been destined for, destined for, our very being and our thoughts and our beliefs are tainted and soiled and are no use for the kingdom of God. It's almost like if we were to go out with friends and have several drinks and become inebriated with alcohol, we begin to react to those around us in an altered manner. We may say things that are inappropriate. We may do something that is out of our character, but what's happening is the alcohol that we have consumed has altered our personality. The way we talk, the way we listen, the way we process information, and several other things that may affect our decision to drink. We may react to certain things in a harsh or defensive manner, and we may say things to people that we will regret. This behavior is not happening because we are bad people. No, our behaviors are being altered by the substance we have put into our bodies. That substance is the barrier, not our personality. It's the same way when we sin against God. It's not the content of our char character that causes us to believe God has pushed us away or pushed away from us or causes us to say and do things that are not precious in God's sight. It's not God that is pushing us away. It is our sin that is making us feel disconnected from God. It's not the content of our character that causes us to believe God has pushed us away. It's not God pushing us away. It is our sin that is making us believe and feel disconnected from God. It is our disobedience that keeps us from feeling God's presence. God has not left our side, but we have left God behind. We have allowed our hearts to become unclean, we have allowed our bodies, minds, and spirits to, to succumb to the ways of this world. This is what David had done. He knew that he had sinned and continued to sin, and he no longer felt the presence of God because of his sin. So he had to go to God, ask for mercy, and for God to grant him grace. When he did that, he was able to open his heart and receive all that God had been having for him all along. 
especially before the uncleanliness of sin crept into his heart. In verse 7, David prays that God would cleanse him from his sins and the defilement he had contracted by those sins. Kind of like what I was talking about when we get inebriated. David says, purge me with hyssop, meaning pardon my sins and let me know that they are pardoned, that I may be restored to those privileges which by sin I forfeited and lost. He earnestly desired that God would lift up the light of God's countenance upon him and put gladness in his heart that he would not only be reconciled to God, but he also asked God to let him know that he was reconciled. He needed signs and wonders. As, I've has, as I have said before, this season of Lent is not an event for Christ. It is a time of reflection and remembrance for us as followers of Christ. We should be reflecting on how we move in this world, how we love and treat others, beginning by loving ourselves. This week's scripture encourages us to live with a clean heart. It tells us why it is important to seek God's face for purity and forgiveness. A clean heart gives us the rights and privileges of the best life available to us. And as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us be sure to talk to God about cleansing our hearts and restoring our innocence. We have to be sure that our hearts are cleansed and purified if we want to continue to effectively worship God. My challenge for you this week is to repeat these words to God at least twice this week. Give me a clean heart so I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. For I'm not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart and I'll follow thee. These words are in your hymnals. You can pull them up on Google. You can find them somewhere. But as we draw closer to Easter, as we draw closer to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God asks that we search our hearts and, and know that we are cleansed, not that we are bad people, not that we are just out here sinning and, and doing whatever we want to do. But just to be sure that our hearts and in our, our intentions are clear and clean. Because when Jesus died and was put in the tomb, what was happening in those three days had a lot to do, the three days before Christ risen, had a lot to do with the world, with what was going on outside of the tomb. Because if we remember, once Jesus died, the earth shook. And the people began to realize that Jesus really was the Messiah. So the next three days, they wondered and they pondered what could happen, what would happen, and how could they be made right by God, right in the eyesight of God for the way they treated Jesus. So prepare your hearts and prepare your minds for worship with God and ask God to clean up your heart even cleaner than it already is. Cause we already know everybody here is, has a clean and beautiful heart. So we ask God to clean us up and prepare us for the resurrection of our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jen. The words are in the chat for us to copy. Receiving and in giving spirit. 
God replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender, all my coldness and fear to your grace I now surrender, spirit open my heart to the joy As my law, my goal, my story, in each thought, word, and deed, may my living bring you glory, spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living, as you love, may I love, in receiving and in giving, spirit. Thank you, John. Asking the spirit to open our hearts. I asked Roxanne to do something for me. And because she's so sweet, she said, okay. <laughs> okay, Roxanne. Thank you so much, Roxanne. I wanted us to leave with that on our hearts um, because she sang it so beautifully and because this is where we are in our Lenten journey, asking God to give us a clean heart. So our benediction for today as, as we leave this place, as God has forgiven our sins, let us go joyfully into God's world, offering God's love, forgiveness, and peace. Go in peace and the peace of God goes with you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to hang out for our fellowship time, just hang in on Zoom. Thank you, though, for those who are on Facebook. 
who have joined us today. We are so blessed by your presence. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.